<laughs> Cold changing wife beaters, soft spoken loudspeakers. They call this bottom feeders, good for nothing drug dealers. Thirty spokes, lean back, nugget, pinky ring. And teachers say we'd never come to be anything. So, what's up? I'm Struggle Jennings, country artist, rapper. Born and raised right here in Nashville. Here with my guy from Maple Motors. They're uh, not only my favorite place to buy cars from, obviously, but they're also like family. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. And I've been to a lot of places. I've bought a lot of cars in my life. And just the transparency y'all have and the honesty and the integrity that that lot's been built on for decades. I really appreciate uh, that. It keeps me coming back, keeps me sending people. I was in a bar in Hollywood a couple weeks ago for the Grammys and um, I bumped into a guy that I'd met there just randomly five months ago yeah. and we're sitting there hanging out and you know just whatever and shooting the shit talking about old cars and stuff come to find out it's the bass player for Green Day oh nice I and so then next time I see him he's like man dude I can't stay off Maple Motors website oh for real he's like I'm a, I'm a junkie now man he said thank you so much for showing me them that's great so, yeah, hopefully he'll, he'll come up to the lot too yeah definitely so well he's bought a bunch of cars from us how many yeah. to be exact six or seven six or I seven feel like I might be missing one but my biggest question how did you even find out about it well I mean I'm a Nashville native so yeah you know it's every time I've ever drove through Hendersonville since I was a kid you look over and see all those beautiful classic cars right Probably seen me out there washing them as a kid. Yeah. I started there when I was 12. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it's, you really can't live in Nashville without, if you're a car lover, mm -hmm. without knowing about Maple Motors. So I don't remember the first time that I actually found out about y'all, but I, it kind of feels like I've known about you forever. Yeah. Right? Uh, I was actually just cutting up with my wife because first time I met her, um, I was in a different relationship. She was a friend. She walks into my house and had a Maple Motors t-shirt on. Yeah. So that was like, that's the first time I met my who, my best friend of 20 years, but my wife now was, she was wearing a Maple Motors shirt. That's pretty well, cool, so. actually. I never knew that. Yeah. Well, tell me about some of your cars. I know. Yeah. So these are some of them out of here. We've got the uh, beautiful 67 Impala. I drove by, saw it there, and stopped and could not not buy it. I mean, it's immaculate. I haven't done anything to this one. Hey, I don't know. This no. one looks pretty good under there. No, this one's beautiful. And I, this <laughs> this one I did, I got this one from you guys. I have put about uh, 25 in it. Yeah. Because it was, he told me when I got it, he said the guy that had this did a lot of work, but he didn't finish it. Yeah. And um, so I just, you know, I hunted around, got all the uh, trim pieces that I needed. It was a stick when I bought it. So I made it automatic because this is one I just wanted to cruise. Of course, they told me it'd be blasphemy if I took this uh oh hearst i wouldn't have done that i, wouldn't done that. I love yeah. this car i'm not even a guy that normally drives sticks but when i saw this and i was like gosh i'll make this auto jeff was like uh you don't want to make this no. one automatic you'd rather buy like, it right, cool done as an yeah, automatic went, it's I, cheaper car too. i went through one clutch that's it and uh, but now i drive it so smoothly it's it's beautiful i love it and this is the 57 bel air that i got from y'all um like i said i put a little bit of money into it just because there were some things that I wanted. 57 was a super um, special car for me because uh, it was one of my grandfather's favorite cars. And um, I think a lot of people know who your grandfather is. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I made this one. I, I put the Cobra Kai in the seats. I was wondering about that. The reason I did is because when uh, this car's name is Daniel's son, which is, you know, of course, it wouldn't have been Cobra Kai. It would have been the Miyagi. Yeah. You know, right. From Karate Kid. But I put the Cobra Kai because it matched the interior so well. I named it Daniel's son because when it had that shift rent, when I pulled off that lot. Yeah. You know, like when <laughs> yeah. Mr. Miyagi lets him borrow the car <laughs> and he's driving. That's how I look pulling out of Maple Motors in this. That was great. So I named it Daniel's son. I put the Cobra Kai in the seats to match it. And I've got like my logo and the speaker. I put a vintage air in it. This is the only one that I've put a uh, Bluetooth. But I put that antique looking headset. This has got actual yeah. Bluetooth. The rest of them I've left the tape decks and stuff because I love the old school feel and I like being able to pop in the tape. And But this one, I, I want to blast that 50s music. Yeah. So <laughs> nothing, nothing's played in this but 50s. Yeah. And I know you love Monte Carlo. There's a big backstory to that. Yeah, so 
my wife wanted an 86 Monte Carlo SS. And I told Jeff, I said, my wife wants 86, it's her birth year. Her dad had one. She wants that um, cherry brandy wine or whatever color, that like dark cherry color. Yeah. And uh, so I told Jeff I wanted an 86 Monte Carlo. He calls me and goes, I got one up here for you, struggle, get up here. I go up there, I sit in it, I fall in love with it. I start it up, I smell it. And he goes, <laughs> man, I messed up. And I'm like, what was wrong? He was like, it's an 84. And I was like, man, she has to have 86. He was like, well, I'll find you 86. I was like, all right, cool. Well, I'm taking this one though. <laughs> now this is mine, I fell in love with it. So when I got in the car and I started it up and I smelt the motor and the seats and I just got this like rush of nostalgia that brought me back to when I was a kid. So I drove this every day to the studio and named my album Monte Carlo. Yeah. After this, because that album was like a collection of the energy and the, the way that I felt driving this every day. And it was the inspiration behind it. The 67, me and my daughter just put out a song uh, called Never Doubted You. And we're riding around town in that car. I haven't put the 57 in there yet, but I've got the song. I just haven't shot it yet. I mean, it's just, you know, like with these old cars, man, just looking at the, the attention to detail, the Chevrolet on the handle, you know, the SS and the seats, it's just so many little things that they don't do with cars anymore. No. Nope. You know? And they uh, don't. And it's just like all the new cars are electronics. That's they're just pushing all that stuff. Yeah. And that's what's driving the price up. Yeah. So, and I bet you get tons of attention driving around in these. Listen, sure. I had a guy in a brand new Porsche Carrera about a month ago stopped me at the gas station to tell me how amazing this car was. That's awesome. He's in a, he's in a Porsche. He's in a couple hundred thousand dollar car. Yeah. I mean, it was decked out. Um, and he stopped to tell me, and like I'm driving down the road in this one, people are honking, you know, uh, same with all of them, but this one just as much as the bright yellow. And you know, people keep saying, they say, oh, you love yellow cars. No, I would have never thought to buy a yellow car, yeah. ever. It's just, I've came up there and they've stood out. And cause I always envisioned a turquoise Bel Air mm -hmm. because that's like turquoise is my color anywhere. I wear a lot of turquoise jewelry. And that was kind of the classic 57 you know um that's what i think of too red and white the yeah, blue and white yeah um, but this one is just it's it was so beautiful and i love the interior and and that's probably going to be the only one that's yellow at the car show yeah for <laughs> sure one of my favorite cars of all time me too 96 impala i've had two of them back in my day me i don't too. have one right I've now had, i've had two of them as well and we actually have these wheels this for sale third. yeah y'all do we, i got them from y'all this is uh my wife's car the one we're chevy guys yeah. and girls period She's got a 69 Chevelle that's in the shop right now, but. That's what she was telling me, man. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be nice. We had talked about getting one of these forever and uh, I was up at the lot and asked Jeff and he was like, man, I've got one in my personal that I just, you know, I don't know if I wanna sell it though. And I ended up talking him out of it. And he mm -hmm. told me everything that was wrong with it, took it right to the shop, put a whole new suspension in it and fixed a few things in the motor and she loves it, I mean, it's beautiful. Well, we get the opportunity to see nice cars like this, but I do know they keep going up in price and yeah. it's harder and harder every year. Well, you know, that's one of the things. So like a lot of this, a lot of these cars I bought when I'd come off a tour Yeah. and I'd have a little bit of extra money and it's like, do you put it in the bank? Do you invest in, you know what? I don't know. A lot of my friends invest in like watches and stuff, but it's like, I love cars. Yep. Um, they're, they only go up in value. I mean, you have some like waves where a car will go up real high and then because it's popular at that mm -hmm. moment, then it might go down a little bit, but it's never drastic. Chevelles did that 2020, they went through the roof. Yeah. And now they're leveled out, but they honestly, when they went way up, they only come down a little. Yeah. They didn't go down yeah, way. Well, I like, got an 85 C10 that at one point, I, I bought it for like 12. Yeah. And at one point, I, two years ago, I could have got 45 for it. Them C10s at the show we were at last weekend, yeah. Thirty thousand yeah. dollars, almost every single one of them yeah. they're going through. And I, I said- I got a beautiful one, I just put a new motor in. I gave it to my son and he uh, blew the motor up just, young not knowing how to take care of it so yeah. i put a new motor in it and um it'll be parked hey didn't you here. pop some motors when you were a kid oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it only popped uh, one i only yeah. popped one but after that i learned off. i did a couple man i was i was the worst when i was young well guys we do have these wheels available so if you want to get those call maple yeah. motors ask for jeff He'll and actually them. way cheaper than i could find them anywhere else yeah. and it was quick and he offered me all kinds of extra stuff and i know who to call when need some i need something now, got a big story on this one here. Yeah. So this 70L Camino, um, 
I named after Monte Carlo my new album that drops this month or in May. It's called El Camino. The story behind El Camino is I was conceived in the back of an El Camino. <laughs> so my mom and my dad met at the West Nashville Skating Rink and uh, made me in the back of an El Camino. That's a story right there. So the, I named the album El Camino because, you know, it's really going back to my roots. Mm -hmm. And the album's super honest and takes you kind of through a journey of my early life and uh, where I am now. And, um, so I actually picked this car up just to use it for a photo. Yeah. And when I pulled it off the lot, just the way it felt, and the way I felt about it, I was like, you know what? I'm not one of those guys that puts cars in my videos and and album covers that I don't own that slip to. Yeah. You know, so I bought it and it needs a little work, of course, right? I got a, Jeff gave me a great price because it needs some work, um, which I just put a new carburetor and breather and stuff on it just because I decided to give this car away. Yeah. So I'm about to leave today to go on tour with Brandon Gilbert. Um, we're gonna be out through March and then through all of April. And my favorite part about touring is the meet and greets. Mm -hmm. You know, people pay a hundred bucks to come backstage, meet me, get a signed picture, take a picture with me, and just hearing them tell me how uh, my music inspires them or gets them through their tough times. It's what keeps me going, you know. Uh, it makes me check my integrity, gives me a responsibility, gives me purpose, you know, as a as an artist and as a man to stay on the straight and narrow and to not let them down and to keep making great music. So I didn't have time to start another project, but I wanted a I wanted the El Camino, and I thought, you know what? What better way to let this car not just sit in my driveway, but be a part of somebody else's life. Give it to somebody that's going to appreciate it for more than, you know, just just a car, right? It's on the album cover. It's in all the promo. So I'm super excited. All they got to do is buy a meet and greet. Yeah. And it's 100 bucks, and they get entered. And then we literally just randomly pick one person out of the – and it's probably only going to be like three or 400 people that, that buy them. So – um, I'm not making any money off of it after I pay, you know, the company's fees and band fees and stuff for the meet and greets. Uh, I'll, I'll break even on it and somebody will get a great car. So that's great. I'm that's really excited about it. It's a way for me to be able to give back to my fans and a way to spread my love for cars. And, you know, of course, they'll get this 70 El Camino with that Maple Motors tag on the front of it, right? Oh, yeah. So hopefully they'll call you and get another one. I tell you but I what. I think it'll be great for somebody. Hopefully whoever gets it puts a little TLC into it and, you know, can uh, fix it up a little bit or just enjoy it as is. That's the thing about a lot of these old school cars. Like, you can, you can paint them and make them perfect and, like, brand new. But even if you don't, it's a piece of history. You know, I could own a Lamborghini or Rolls Royce. It's not the same at all. It's not the same. And it, it's, like, the way that I feel... Um, I feel centered and grounded driving these cars, yeah. right? Because it's like, you know, a lot of a lot of times in life and with success and just our journeys, you know, there's a lot of things that can happen that can get you ungrounded or knock you off center. But getting back in, a, you know, a piece of your childhood or getting back into an old car that just has that feeling, um, it'll bring you back to reality and to life and the, the simpler things. Now you yeah. see why I like my job so much. I oh, drive yeah. every single one. Yeah. Even the ones that I don't want to drive, I'm, I'm driving them. They nonstop attention for one. Doesn't stop. It doesn't matter if it's a five thousand dollar car or a fifty thousand dollar car. They're getting the same amount of attention. People yeah. pull over on the side of the road just to talk and want to yep. want to talk cars. Yep. The car community is huge, and all of us have the same thing in common. We like cars. Yep. <laughs> and then that other one over there is a. Uh, we won't show you too much of it because he just got hit by a deer the other day. Oh, no. Yeah. That's what the headline. I just yeah. said that. But at 2002 Blazer, my son had blown up the 85, and he was like, I want a car. And I'm like, well, I'm not giving you a car because I need you to pick up your brothers and sisters. I need you to go get groceries and stuff. Yeah. And I was just driving by, and I was like, oh, man, that two-door Blazer, 02, so cool. Yeah. I remember, you know, when they came out, and so he didn't even really understand how cool it is, but now so many people stop him and 
talk about it and tell them that they love it. So he's in high uh, school. That was a thing. Uh, one of my buddies had. And he he put two uh, kicker L sevens oh, yeah. in the back. Yeah. That thing ridiculous. Just so ridiculous. Couldn't yeah. breathe in the back seat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, that's loud, man. Yeah. So this is a little bit of my Maple Motors collection. I bet your neighbors trip out. They probably love I it. I think that I think the neighbors think I sell drugs. <laughs> Mike. For sure. I mean, <laughs> you see, we got the, normally those are all in the driveway too, the his and hers Suburban and my brand new Silverado that normally has those big turquoise wheels on it. Uh, speaking of taking care of people, he was doing uh, all these uh, places that you're Rehabs, building. yeah. Rehabs that you're building. Yeah, so we're in the process right now. We're opening our first one, hopefully in about a month, in Pineville, Kentucky. And uh, the goal is to open 25 rehabs in the next 24 months. Um, you know, I lost the mother of my kids to a drug overdose. My wife lost the father to her kids to a drug overdose, and Junior Dial, and all of them. You know, that whole family, and um, so many friends. I think so everybody here members. has to know somebody in your life has ruined themselves over pills and drugs. For sure, for sure. And this fentanyl epidemic is crazy. And so, you know, it's been a goal of mine to give back, and I partnered with some guys that uh, buy old hospitals yeah. that are dying in these small towns and bring in good doctors, renovate them, you know, give these, bringing back to the town medical care. And so they were like, hey, we've got room in these hospitals to do rehabs. And I was like, let's go. So we're doing a detox, a 28 day program, an aftercare program. Uh, it's called Sound Sobriety. We're implementing songwriting in as a way to get all their feelings out yeah. and teach them how to write it in form of a song. Then we've got artists and big songwriters coming in to write with them or to talk to them. You put a lot of thought into this. Oh yeah, and then when they leave, they'll all leave with you know a BMI number um, where they'll be a registered songwriter. Mm -hmm. We'll do all the paperwork, make them a register. So they got a, a little bit of hope as well. They yeah. get to, you know, for me, uh, creating music is like a big avenue for my, you know, all my crazy, right? Like all the stuff that I've been through and. Um, you know, all the issues that I have or anger or resentment or, you know, you get it out on paper, you put it out in song and it's, it's therapy for me. So I want to give that to some of them and hopefully they find the love as well. But if not, we're still, you know, we're still giving them all the tools that they need mm -hmm. and leading by example, showing them that like, hey, I've been here. You know, I did a lot of time in prison. I came home, turned my life around, got custody of all my kids, you know, built a home and a life for them and, you know, with drug free. Yeah, you know, 15, 16 years right. sober. So, yeah, just giving that back to them and trying to change some lives and, you know, spread it across the country. So, well, I do appreciate all your time. Yeah, We're going to get out of your hair today. You're getting ready to go on tour and yeah. stuff. I want yeah. you to relax before yeah, you leave. Man. Thanks again for your time, man. For sure. And Thank y'all. See, see you guys. Maple Motors. Go to Maple Motors. <laughs> I'm telling you, they're the best. They're the most honest, most transparent. It's a big family up there. Old Jim's still up there counting the money. Yeah, it's, pops with his gold yeah, tops. Yeah, <laughs> real deal, man. It's it's um, not only is their collection a piece of American history, but they are too, and and that spirit, you know, of um, just good old boys, family. I love it, family, man. Thank y'all. Oh, okay, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. For more information on purchasing tickets to Struggle Jennings show, go to strugglejennings.com and also check out maplemotors.com for all your classic car needs. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Monte Carlo.